One thing we haven't spoken about really to any degree at all is the fact that a ketone, kind of like this guy, actually exists in equilibrium with another species. That other species, you can actually get the name of it just from this here. Ketones exist in equilibrium with things called enols. In this case, the corresponding enol would look something like this. We haven't spoken about them much because the fact is that enols are <coughs> not particularly stable. They do, <coughs> excuse me, they do not hang around for very long. The ketone form is much, much, much more stable. Oops, drew the arrow wrong. Ooh, sorry. That arrow should be teeny tiny. Just checking I'm awake. It's 110, so I really shouldn't be. Uh, there is a rapid, 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 rapid interconversion between these two structures with the ketone form being much, much, much favored. It's all to do with the stability of this carbonyl group. That's very, very stable. Never mind the fact on this carbon you have two different functional groups, which destabilizes the whole thing. Um, but because enols are so reactive, they can actually be used in certain ways in terms of reactivity of ketones. And so one of the things we're going to talk about before we get there is a concept of how we go from here to here. Because these are somewhat similar to what we know as resonance structures because you're talking about the movement of a lone pair, uh, the movement of a pi bond. But in resonance structures, you're usually talking about the movement of a pi bond and a pair of electrons. You can see here we're talking about the movement of not only a pi bond, but also a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom that was originally on this CH3, now it's the CH2 has moved to the hydrogen, has moved to the oxygen, sorry. So structures like these are not resonant structures. These are things that are known as tautomers. You won't see this word very often, so it's important you understand it now. Tautomers are simply those Structures like these that rapidly interconvert the difference between the placement of a pi bond and a hydrogen atom, different to resin structures. And you can actually make this happen um, to your advantage when you're trying to do a particular synthesis using either acid or base catalysis. All right, so just to recap, these are useful because they are much more reactive than ketones, and ordinarily, the enol exists in such a small amount, you really can't do much with it. But if you can force that interconversion to happen, you can actually make this and then have it react with something. And we'll see a couple of examples of reactions of these when we make them. But before we do that, we're going to look at a, little, we're going to look at a simple example of how we can uh, figure out the mechanism of how this happens. We're going to do it both for the acid catalyzed mechanism, and then we'll do it in base catalyzed. And you'll see these don't really follow any different rules than what you've already seen. So let's just go ahead and start off. And I'm just drawing this hydrogen here simply so you can follow that originally it was here and it ends up here. All right. So if, if you have a carbonyl compound and you throw in there H3O plus, well, you've all seen exactly what happens between those two species first off. It's always the same thing. So there shouldn't be any surprise here to see what happens first. Well, that is that your, uh, your ketone oxygen or your aldehyde oxygen or whatever it is, protonates. Now, we saw before that these were equilibrium arrows, and it's exactly the same here. And what we end up with is something that looks like this. So we have uh, oxygen uh, that now has a plus charge on it. I'm going to draw this on again. Now, there are a couple of different ways to how you want to do this next step. All right. Um, the book shows a resonance structure um, between these two molecules. 
Um, but I'm going to show something slightly different. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show something that I personally think makes a little bit more sense, but that's just me. We have just generated some water. And bear in mind, of course, this is an acid catalyzed process, so you want to regenerate that water somehow. So what that does is this hydrogen, or what this oxygen wants to do is to lose its hydrogen, or to lose one of its bonds, because it's got one too many. All right? This water could grab that hydrogen and go back to here, which is perfectly fine. That's why there's an equilibrium arrow here, but it doesn't take us to the enol tautomer. One other thing that could happen, simply because of the acidity of this hydrogen, because it's on an alpha carbon, is this. Grabs that hydrogen. And what happens then is, because we have this pi bond here, this carbon-hydrogen bond can break, putting a double bond between those two carbons and making that carbon-oxygen double bond break and giving you see if we can just follow this, giving you your enol and regenerating your H3O+. That is the very simple two-step process for generating an enol tautomer from a ketone tautomer under acidic conditions. Make sense? I hope so. Let's move on to exactly the same thing, but if we were using a base, all right, I'm going to draw the same thing out again. All right, so let's draw out the hydrogen. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. Because, uh, well, once again, this is a reversible process. Now, well, this is a base, so H minus is a reasonably strong base, reasonably. So what happens here is, and bear in mind, this isn't the only thing that can happen. Uh, you could potentially have this acting as a nucleophile and going in here and giving you a dial, all right? Uh, but one other thing that this can do that we haven't seen before is this can act as a base. And because these hydrogens are particularly acidic, this can grab that hydrogen, funnel those electrons into that carbon-carbon bond, and cause the formation of that carbon oxygen, uh, the breakage of that carbon oxygen, blah, 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 let me start again. It can cause the formation of that carbon oxygen double bond. I got it right that time. So what we end up with is carbon carbon double bond, oxygen minus, essentially an enolate that we've seen before. This can actually exist in two different forms. And these are just two resonance structures. All right. It looks something like this. But uh, these are just two resonance structures for an enolite. But what we are looking at right now is how we get to the enol. So let me just finish off doing this, I'm going to draw out my O minus again. And what's the O minus going to attack to form the enol and then regenerate OH minus? Well, it's going to attack what it just formed here. We formed H2O there. So let's go ahead and do that. That just goes ahead, attacks there, kicks those electrons onto the oxygen, gives you back your OH minus, and gives you your uh, enol. And here we go. There's our enol. And there is the base catalyst back again.